Game day's coming up. So, of course, me and Coop's got to preview the OU versus West Virginia game out in Morgantown. All that coming up here in about 10 seconds. What is good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, talking OU football, college football, and sports in general. And in this video, we're going to talk about OU at West Virginia. We're going to give you some of the X factors on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. So me and my man Coop's going to dive right in there. While you're here, please jump in the comments. Give us your score prediction. We want to know what you think the final score is going to be in this game and if Oklahoma is going to prevail or not. So jump in the comments and let us know that. While you're also here, hit the like button. And, and as well as subscribe, you know, the drill that helps out with the YouTube algorithm, bringing more followers in and bringing people in that love OU football and college football all the same. And then share because sharing is caring. So with that, let's dive right into the preview. X factors. OU West Virginia. OK, so let's go ahead and dive into the West Virginia game um, and Oklahoma. So Saturday, 11 o'clock, FS1. We've got those parameters in there. Who do you think is the X factor on the offensive side going into this game? So for me, I'm looking at Dylan Gabriel. This is the game where he's going to have to bounce back from the three interception game and look kind of just off overall. He's going to have to get out there and he's going to settle down and make it happen. Luckily, he's only got four interceptions this season. Three of them came last week. This is the game he's going to get 300 plus game, 300 plus yards. Actually, he needs to go for 400. West Virginia has been decimated on the defensive side, especially in the secondary, and they're giving up over 40 points per game. So at this point, this is a situation where we should be able to cook. Now, I think some of those players are coming back in the secondary, yeah. but they're not. They shouldn't get enough of them, or they shouldn't honestly be ready enough to stop our players. So in this game, to me, offensive side, the most critical piece. It's going to be Dylan Gabriel getting out there and getting 400 yards passing. What do you think? You know what I'm going to do is is I'm going to say I'm going to say uh, a combo of Farouk and Braden Willis. Here's why. Okay. Uh, I made the comment against Kansas that if you force some guys like uh, Kobe Bryant to get out there and be physical play after play after play, eventually they're not going to want to. And if guys are coming back off the injured reserve, uh, and guys are coming back off the injured list, um, you put Jalil Farouk in a lot of those Debo Samuel uh, type of plays where he's, you know, running those end arounds or, you know, those, those uh, you know, tunnel screens, and wide receiver screens out on the outside. Uh, Farouk, Farouk's got them, some thickness to him, and he's not a fun tackle. Uh, also, Braden Willis. Uh, I, I am going back. Uh, I looked at the, the Baylor film again. Uh, the interception where Braden Willis was going over the middle, that should have been pass interference, and, and I'm not going to back down from that. He had one arm available. The other arm was pinned down because of the defender. Uh, but I think that we need to see some more Braden Willis, and we need to see some guys need to come up here and tackle him. And I think right now, especially after a loss, uh, Braden Willis is going to be able to step up and, and, and you know, kind of throw the team on his back. Now, yeah. do I agree with you that it's time for a 400-yard passing game? Uh, do I agree with you that I want to see a 57-point, you know, offensive explosion? I do. I do. DG needs to have himself a game. Uh, but I think that those two guys are going to make it work. And uh, we're going to see Mims and Gray continue to do what they do. Okay. I'm sold on that. I'm also sold on Eric Gray going out there getting another 100 yards because it seems like he's the most consistent player on yeah. this team. I'm, I'm hoping Marcus Major can step up. I'm thinking it's probably going to be next year before we really get a, the big major season, pun intended, on top of having, of course, Barnes and Salchuk running the ball and and all of that. I do believe that next year is probably the year that we get a, a, a major season out of Marcus Major. But Eric Gray's going to get us his 100 yards. That's going to be the most important thing, in my personal opinion. It's the only thing I really care about. I'm happy with that right there. So, defensive X factors. Who do you think on the defensive side really is jumping out to you that is going to be key in this one? I'll let you start off with your X factor on defense. Um, 
Well, I'm going to give you my X factor because I think it means everything if this guy comes out and has a better game and we just mm-hmm. talked about him. And it's not that guys have been jumping out for the right reason. It's Danny Stutzman. We need to see Danny mm-hmm. Stutzman do what he can do. Um, he is going to need to, um, I don't know, match Deshaun White. I didn't think I'd ever be uh, saying that, but Deshaun White, um, I don't know if you know this or if you heard that, but apparently for volunteer uh, film sessions on Sundays, Deshaun White had not been coming in for the longest time. A couple weeks back, he started coming in on his own free will because it's not mandated. They have to have a mandatory uh, day off, but it is encouraged. He starts showing up and watching film right after the TCU game. Who's been our most consistent defensive player since the TCU game? Deshaun White. White. So Deshaun White is showing up. <clears throat> now it's time for Danny Stutzman to take these things seriously. Um, and what happens if he does? We start plugging gaps. We start filling holes in the run game. And then guess what? You ask a guy like JT Daniels, who is notorious for when things are on his shoulders, all hell breaking loose, loose the wrong way. So yep. uh, if Danny Sussman can do that and this team can go ahead and, again, not, I, mean, I, don't, I don't even care if – I want them to hold them under 120 yards rushing for the game. I, I'm not asking for 65. I'm not asking for, you know, double digits. Just keep it around 100. I'm with you there. I think on the defensive side, for me, the X factor is really going to be on Reggie Grimes as well as Ethan Downs. Yeah. We need to get some pressure on the quarterback, and we need to get some sacks. I mean, Grimes had four sacks in the first two games of the season, and we haven't heard from him since. And it's probably that teams are keying on him. Once you get film, you know what to do, and you start making adjustments. We need him to get back to that force that he was to start the season and start being disruptive. I think that's going to be key. It's going to be pressure on JT Daniels, force JT Daniels to do the things that JT Daniels has done in the last five years and the reason why he's at West Virginia now. I mean, he's gone from a five-star number one player in California, number six nationally at USC, and then to Georgia, never play, loses it to Stetson Bennett, and now he's ended up at West Virginia. So he's fallen from grace in a lot of capacities, and I think that if we get enough pressure on him, we can disrupt his game and force some turnovers on the secondary side. Like you mentioned, Deshaun White's been playing strong. I think Danny Stutzman, once he decides to follow um, his leadership and move over an inch, (laughs) (laughs) he'll be able to make some bigger plays, you know, and that's what you want. I mean, he made that one. He took that inch play against Iowa state and got that interception and almost ran it back. He started recognizing, Hey, this, I was in the wrong position. This is where I'm supposed to go. I learned, he started learning on the go and recognizing they were exposing him, took advantage of it. Need more of that. But the way you get those is by getting that pressure on the quarterback, force JT Daniels to do what makes him uncomfortable. And I think we'll be able to get that once we have more pressure. So it's going to be on Grimes. It's going to be on Cole. It's going to be on downs, especially on the edges. And then those 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 nose tackles, Jeffrey Johnson, I think it's that defensive line. But really, I need Grimes and Ethan Downs to get back to what they were Early. when we initially played them. Yeah. Because looking at the numbers here, let's look, let's, let's let's go look at the, the, the stats. Rankings wise on the offensive side, what is West Virginia in the Big 12? All right. So you've got um they are number nine of ten in total offensive yards per game. Um <laughs> it's I mean that that's that's rough. Uh you've got six of ten in passing yards per game. Uh OU um is sitting at number three. Yeah, not too um, bad. Let's see here. And rushing yards per game, I believe that they are number six, seven, eight, no, seven, seven, seven of ten rushing yards per game, and then scoring their eight of ten. Um, OU's up to number one rushing yards per game. Uh, I believe that uh, we were just talking about this. Uh, there, we are point one yard per game better than uh, TCU right now. Yeah, And so um, you're starting to see Duggan run that ball a little bit less. And uh, Eric Gray is continuing to be Eric Gray. Dylan Gabriel, I don't know if you've seen or kind of paid attention to this, but the past couple weeks, our he been quarterback, scooting. he's been moving around. And, and he's I don't been know scooting. If 
it's in the, like the 50, 60 yards per game range uh, for Dylan Gabriel. And um, I don't know. I mean, you know, every single time I see him run, uh, you know, obviously it's like, uh, it's like watching. Hold your breath right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> you just, you just kind of got to get excited. But anyway, so West Virginia, again, like I said, uh, I, I do believe he's listed as a tight end. Um, they're CJ Donaldson, 6'2 freshman, 240. Mm-hmm. So he's a bigger running back. Um, and he is, I mean, he's nothing special. Um, he, he will require some tackling. Um, but Hey, listen, we couldn't, we couldn't see Deuce Vaughn and, uh, or the squirrel. So maybe we can see a six, two dude back there because, uh, you know, he's going to be somebody that is not going to be nimble and get out. But again, if you're in the wrong hole, it don't matter because that means it's wide open. So I, I expect to see, um, I expect to see OU's defense have another opportunity to have a week like we had against Iowa state. Yeah, this should be the perfect opportunity for us to do that. We're wearing the Rough Riders uh, jerseys that everyone hates. Mm-hmm. And so the good thing is is that we are 9-0 and in said jersey. So um, that should lead us to have the <laughs> traditional uh, W. But at the same time, y'all are going to be mad because y'all going to see the jersey. And be like, I hate these jerseys. You're going to complain. Don't complain. Hopefully it gives us some good juju and we go out there and do something. But. Outside of that, I'm kind of curious to see what Billy Bowman does on the defensive side also. If he continues this ascension to becoming a national threat, mm-hmm. if I feel like next season he's going to end up on one of those All-American lists. It feels like he's going to be one of those players that's going to be like, you got to watch him. He's going to be on the Thorpe watch list and all of that stuff because he's playing good. But Looking at the defensive side, West Virginia is not very – I mean, they're about what Oklahoma is right now, and you can tell that there's a difference in between the two. The difference between us is that – I don't know. We're not as bad as them, I guess you could say. It's probably the best way of saying it. We're not as bad as West Virginia, and I just don't know how to explain how bad we are in comparison. Because, see, West Virginia, they played Iowa State and lost 31-14 to 14 last 30. week. 31 bro like they gave like, up 31 I, points to iowa state that uh, tells you something yeah you know it makes me almost want to look and see uh <laughs> look and see if there was a defensive touchdown or something there because i mean we've seen we saw that iowa state offense and woof that was uh it was something. oh no oh no it was deckers and uh the running back well Xavier Cartavius Hudson. uh norton he had two touchdowns Decker yeah. had two passing touchdowns. Xavier uh, had 10, 10 catches for 123. Oh, yeah. They ate him alive. Yeah. So, and what we did to Iowa State was is we forced turnovers. And so mm-hmm. with that, that tells me we shouldn't have a problem in this game beating up on West Virginia. So, yeah. as we go to that, Give me your score prediction. What do you have on this spread? All right, I think right now, let's look at the Vegas numbers. I'll give you that. Oklahoma is roughly a seven and a half point favorite right now with the over under set at 68. What you got in this game? Uh, I believe I wrote down on page number two. I have 48 24. I think that, uh, I think that again, a super late touchdown. Um, I think that this defense um, is going to do better. And, uh, but again, I just, I just don't have the faith in something low scoring, uh, especially when we're going on the road. Um, I'm glad it's early because again, I don't see any burning couches in the, uh, in the nighttime. And uh, you know, this, this team is not looking, um, not looking good. There's not much to be happy about. There's not much to rally behind um again you know let's see uh so uh, yeah 48 24 late touchdown and again we'll all be happy if that's the case yeah i'm gonna go ahead and give you my score prediction i'm gonna say 50 to 18 i think it's gonna be a offensive just blasting with a lot of defensive turnovers we need to get back to those turnovers we did at iowa state and i think this is the perfect game to do it we need to get back to those 50 point games. We got to get back to those blowout victories. We need to get back yeah. to those number games. And so for me, that is the prediction that I'm going to put in place. So 
Right. That is the Baylor and Oklahoma. I'm sorry, not Baylor. That's the West Virginia and Oklahoma preview. Don't know why I said Baylor again. I it still got Baylor on the brain because West Virginia beat Baylor 43 to 40. That just infuriates me. So, Oklahoma, West Virginia preview. Give us your score prediction in the comments. We definitely want to hear what you will have to say on that. We appreciate y'all tuning in to Unfair Sports. Coop, thanks again for pulling up as you always do. Most definitely. You can find the man right here, his Twitter account right there in the scroll at the bottom. You can see mine as well. Please, while you're here, hit the like and the subscribe button as well as share because sharing is caring. Jump in the comments and let us know what you think about the video. Give us your thoughts. Are you happy, sad? Do you like a recruit? Not like the recruit? Do you like the review? Not like the review? Whatevs. Jump in the comments. Interact with us. We will definitely reply back to you all. So with that, we will chop it up with you all. I don't know. In about a day or two. All right. Peace.